but maybe Matthew, can I hand over to you? Uh, so our final speaker is Matthew Thompson from uh, Liverpool University. And we've, we've asked you to kind of listen to the other speakers and also offer reflections on that as well as your own thoughts, Matthew. So really appreciate that. Thanks. Well, thanks. Thanks for the invite. Um, it's a pleasure to be here to speak along such, you know, such inspiring voices. And I'll do my best to do that kind of summary task that you, you've asked of me. Although, to be honest, I have got 15 slides here, which, which suggests less summary and more kind of new content. But um, I'll do my best to sum it up and sort of try and put it into the context of, of British municipalism, really, and, and, and maybe the case of Plymouth too, right? Um, do you like tell me to shut up if I, go, if, I go, if, I, if I talk for too long as well? Um, so before I do that, I want to sort of take us back a bit to the kind of um, the historical and sort of ideological roots of municipalism. And a lot of this can sort of be traced back to one of the big, the big kind of thinkers, I guess, in this is, is Murray Bookchin. So the eco-socialist and anarchist Murray Bookchin, whose daughter Debbie Bookchin is very important and kind of um, influential in the movement today, particularly in, uh, in Spain. Um, and his idea was around drawing on historical examples, really, of around um, assemblies and cooperatives and communes. So particularly, for instance, the Paris Commune in 1871, this kind of revolutionary um, space where um, the people of Paris took Paris away from the French state for a, period, for a, number, of, a number of weeks. Uh, it's amazing kind of, um, amazing kind of uh, historical example, which Booked in Jaws upon, tries to draw out this idea of um, citizenship um, that's different to a kind of national state citizenship. So the citizenship involved in municipalism, or what he, what he calls libertarian municipalism, other names like there's other names along this along these lines around communalism, uh, democratic confederalism, and I'll explain some of these in a bit. The idea of citizenship is that it's bound up with cities rather than just say urbanization or nation states, um, and cities being really important rather than just urbanization uh, itself, because cities are kind of these centres of of of, of activity. Um, they 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 enable encounter and assembly to happen. They enable people to come together and 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 deliberate and kind of and and work off each other and kind of and, Organize. So cities, rather than just say urbanization, is really quite important um, to, this, to this kind of politics of proximity, which is at the center of what we might call municipalism or communalism. And out of that, we, we have these things called assemblies, people's assemblies, in, in, this, in the kind of space of politics and, and cooperative, the space of economy. And these together, if you like, sort of lay the foundation for a, for a, for a different kind of polity, an alternative sort of society that is very different to. The idea is, is, is it replaces eventually the nation state and capitalism. This is quite a radical idea. These are really sort of radical, quite far reaching um, theories that, that have been picked up in recent decades, around recent years, sorry, around, around the rise of new municipalism. And it links to um, quite a distinctive strategic approach, which I think Cooperation Jackson and Valia Kuno has articulated certainly a lot in the, in the past around how, how, how amazing they, they do it there. They've really sort of run with this idea of dual power. Perhaps Carly can, can, can elaborate on this later, you do it certainly better than I can, but this is the idea that you, you, you sort of, you, you construct a kind of secondary pole of power to the nation state, outside of the nation state, that eventually supersedes it. So you, you effectively you kind of expand the, the commons and you build alternative autonomous institutions, like cooperatives, like as people's assemblies, um, that then try and push for this kind of prefigurative alternative that is feminist, that is anti-racist, that is ecologically sustainable and so on, and pushes us towards a post-capitalism, what people might call a solidarity economy, uh, something that can something that can emerge out of the, the the shell of the the shell of the old, if you like. And at the same time, this is why it's dual. At the same time, this first approach is supported by um, uh, another, which is about um, engaging with the state, so leveraging concessions from the state, taking hold of local political institutions through mobilising social movements, as we see in the case of Barcelona on Camus. So Barcelona on Camus is a real kind of uh, exemplar, exemplar of this kind of approach. Winning electoral office through platforms, through sort of different ways of mobilising um, people for that task, outside of the party form, which is very much bound up with representative democracy in the nation state, and then reimagining and transforming that state from the inside through kind of a guerrilla occupation or kind of insurgency or bureaucracy. And then using the power that you have to trans not only transform the state structures, but then to actually offer support, uh, funding, policy support, and so on, to cultivate that kind of autonomous power that Cooperation Jackson, I think, really embodies quite, quite beautifully. And this is a bit of a uh, busy slide, and I won't go into it too much, but this is 
with this in mind, with this idea of dual power and kind of the assembly and the commune in mind, um, I thought it would be good just to sort of draw out some of the differences in this, this, this new movement of what we call new municipalism. And if you're interested, this is based on an article I recently wrote or last year called What's So New About New Municipalism, which is open access. You can, you can find it online and, and have a read if you can't read all this now. Um, and here I sort of draw, I draw the differences out around this idea of dual power, I guess. I draw the differences out between the likes of Corporation Jackson, which I see as a kind of autonomous style of municipalism. I argue they're a kind of autonomous municipalism. Barcelona on Camus and the kind of confluences and the Spanish confluences are a different kind of municipalism. They are what I argue to be a platform municipalism, partly using that language because they rely on citizen platforms, which are different to state to the, to the party. And that they also use technological and digital platforms to do kind of digital decision making, it's free budgeting and, and decide them, you know, sort of voting um, platforms. And at the same time, I've um, also trying to, to, to compare the, these two kind of more quintessential municipalisms, if you like, with the third, with what, what, what I argue to be a managed municipalism, which is slightly different, I think. And, and some would say well, it doesn't really come under the rubric of municipalism as understood in that kind of book chin assembly style. And this, if you like, we can see in terms of the community wealth building movement that's really emerged in the US and the UK in the last few years, very much around the Preston model, tied up with outcomes, uh, generating outcomes around economic democracy through procurement and worker and co-ops, for instance, rather than, say, process oriented, which is what I think uh, platform and autonomists are much more geared for. They're much more interested in prefigurative, so being the change you want to see, you know, really sort of, um, really sort of embodying that the, the kind of change in the processes of, of political democracy that they, that they, that they instill. And if you like, this, 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 these differences can be, can be um, teased apart and represented in, in their relationship to the state. So this famous phrase that is banded around a fair bit, in, and, in against and beyond the state, we can see these three different forms of municipalism and, uh, uh, sort of in, rep, being represented in, those different, in this different kind of um, polls or these different kind of approaches to the state. So community wealth building, managed municipalism is very much inside the state. It's technocratic engineering from the inside through procurement levers and trying to, trying to generate um, change from, from the top down, if you like, trying to cultivate bottom-up practices, but through kind of technocratic levers in the first instance. And some would argue in the movement against that, of course, but we can have that debate if you like. Against the state, and this is a get, the language is a bit simplistic here, of course, because Barcelona and Camus are doing all these, all these three things. But if you like, they're kind of against the state. They're kind of, they're, 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 they're transforming the state through these kind of um, novel forms of electoral strategy around citizen platforms. And then beyond the state is very much this kind of autonomous sort of um, approach, which Rajava and, and, and Corporation Jackson uh, embody, which is really sort of moving towards this stateless society of confederated co-ops. The thing that I, 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 I failed to mention earlier about Bookchin is that, that the assemblies and co-ops that are sort of the kind of cell structure of a new society beyond the state, the really important thing about them is that they are confederated. They are sort of federated up into networks, um, at different regional structure and eventually global structure. So this idea of a confederation of, of communes is really important. And this is, how, and this is how we can get beyond this kind of idea of a local track or the local global kind of um, paradox or, or dilemma, which, which, we, you know, which the nation state kind of resolves through its regulation of, of, of borders and boundaries. Or well, potentially municipalists can start to, to network and, and federate with each other and actually start to create supply chains and forms of regulation and forms of governance, which are kind of democratic and move beyond the nation state in the way that we think of it. A big debate in all this, and it has been brought up today, I think, is this sort of idea of, is it political or is it economic democracy? So, I mean, obviously it's both, and this is summed up in Corporation Jackson's slogan, the democratization of society and the socialization of production, it's political and uh, economic democracy. But Debbie Bookchin, the daughter of Murray Bookchin, for instance, who's now very much involved in some of the Spanish conferences as I, as I mentioned earlier, she, she really sort of goes to town and really sort of sums it up in quite, in quite, in, in quite straightforward terms, that new municipalism is not about implementing progressive policies, but about returning power to ordinary people. So it's not just about what Ada Kalau would call um, the temple, this kind of like preordained set of policy um, instruments, it's, it's an agora. Okay? So we thought going back to this idea of Athenian, ancient Athenian democracy, so marketplace is a kind of arena of decision making of, of, of different kind of groups arguing over what, over what um, deliberating over what future they want. So that's, and I think this is a really important point that this is not a kind of, you know, as I say, a set of policy prescriptions. This is a kind of method, a kind of a method that um, sort of 
push, push forward a different kind of society. And that, that that's, this links very much to this, this idea of the feminization of politics, as Lena said earlier, um, and to this idea of kind of collective theory building. So we, we, we're, not, we're not just relying on, on off the shelf models from elsewhere, we're doing this together. So with all this in mind, I'm, my, my, the big question for me is, can we design this stuff in from the top down and progressive technocrats in cities or, or others like us, you know, people, people, social entrepreneurs, people involved in co-ops, people involved in community organizing. If you like, there's a certain sense of professionalism in that. Can we design this stuff in? Can we kind of generate this change from the top down or from kind of these kind of progressive policy um, approaches, progressive organizing approaches? Um, I'm aware I'm running out of time, but I'll, I'll take a quick dive into the history of this and um, say, suggest that it has been tried before in London, in the Great London Council in the mid 80s, 81 to 86, um, as Aaron Hathley's new book, very interesting new book, as, 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 uh, as beautifully sort of ex explicated it, uh, was a really radical um, endeavour. Um, and really, if you like, as a kind of prototypical municipalism. So they were anti-racist, anti-imperialist, anti-sexist, and, and, and if you like, quite anti-capitalist. And so they supported a lot of cooperatives, community organising in different, in different, in different boroughs in London. They, I haven't got a lot of time to go into it right now, but they were in many ways embodying many of the kind of municipalist principles that we take for value today. And they were influenced, the, the Greater London Council um, let the Labour run government at the time was influenced by it by a, a strong degree by this book, In and Against the State. And this is where this phrase comes from, right? The in, and, in and Against and Beyond the State comes from this kind of, this, this, these ideas in the late 1970s. This book was, was written in 1979 um, by a collective that included John McDonnell, the former, former shadow, cha shadow um, um, Chancellor of the Exchequer, who was also uh, involved in the Great London Council where he cut his teeth, and John Holloway, a Marxist economist, thinker, and this is this stuff was kind of laid the groundwork, I think, for sort of thinking about how to be a kind of insurgent or, an, or a kind of guerrilla in, in, in the bureaucracies of the state and, and trying to sort of transform them from, the, from within. And we see these ideas um, kind of resounding down the decades, if you like, and, and taking hold now in the likes of Preston. So the Centre for Local Economic Strategies, or CLES, the think tank that is driving forward some of the stuff going on in Preston today, very much responsible, if you like, for um those original ideas around procurement flows and sort of capturing procurement flows and diverting some of the um, procurement of anchor institutions to work around co-ops and social enterprises and generating some of that some of this sort of municipalist action if you like from the top down that those ideas came from Claire's, if you like or from neff originally from the like, new economics foundation and some of these think tanks and particularly Claire's, was, was came out of that earlier wave in the 1980s so Claire's was set up by um by the Greater London Council and by a few of the other metropolitan uh, borough councils before they were um, before they were um, taken apart and effectively kind of uh, shut down by Thatcher. So in the dying days of their um, of their life of their lives, they were basically gave um, they ceded a load of money to to set up Clares, which was to take on some of these ideas. And it, and admittedly, in the in the few decades since, they you know they've they've gone in different directions, but. In a way, they're now coming back around full circle and sort of trying to trying to experiment some of these ideas on the on the ground. So we see this we see this in Preston to a certain extent. It's proved quite successful. Some are arguing at the moment that the local elections, even though they were incredibly dire for Labour nationally, in those areas that did that have experimented with community wealth building with, with some of the kind of Preston model ideas, Preston included. Salford is another one. The sensible mayor of the sensible socialist mayor of Salford here, called Dennett. Increase his vote share to fifty nine percent, for instance. So it wasn't all doom and gloom for Labour. So we see some, we see some, 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 uh, some positive news coming out of this. But what, what I want to argue here is that um, I guess they don't necessarily go far enough. Community wealth building, as I say, is kind of um, is part of that management this, this tradition, and I think um, it, 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 it lacks something. There is a kind of gap somewhere within this sort of um, this approach, within this strategic approach. The, the, you know, it's a lopsided dual power approach, if you like, and it lacks some of the uh, some some other some other aspects which I think are really important. And those those aspects which I think are important are to do with space, creating the space for struggle for dual power. So Henri Lefebvre, the Marxist sociologist, the, the, the great Marxist philosopher, who whose ideas around the right to the city, particularly the right to the city, are very influential in the Spanish uh, the Spanish municipalist movement and elsewhere at the moment. You know, his ideas for was along the lines, you know, he said, for instance, to change life, we must first change space. 
it doesn't mean that necessarily just literally that we need to we need to have the physical spaces where they are important. We also th- we're also thinking about the lived space of everyday life, the kind of the dreams and and the, and and the, and, the, and the memories, the classic memories, the kind of rituals and the imagination and desires that we we live out our, our daily lives are really important. And we need also the material spaces to then to then to, to sort of um, to to imagine these things and, and 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 go about our lives. At the same time. That's this lived space idea that the Fev talked about. Uh, it's complemented by this idea of conceived space. So there's there's conceived space, this is the space of kind of planners, of rationality, of logic, of visions, of representations of space, maps and models and, and theories, and, and if you like, of experts. And this it's really you know live, conceived space is an incredibly important um, aspect in the production of space, but it's only one aspect, and lived space is the other. And I think we we in the Preston model, for instance, we've kind of um, and, and community wealth building, we 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 we've sort of we've we've pushed for conceived space, the space of planners, at the detriment of lived space, and thinking about how we how how that can be enhanced and sort of generate different kinds of spatial practices. And I'm thinking here a lot. I'm thinking here of of of, the, of that of some of the first waves of municipalism that came out of um, late 19th century Italy, or in and around Bologna and Emilia Romagna, which today is of course host one of the big, most powerful cooperative. Kind of industries sectors in the world and uh, look at Margaret Cohen has written a really interesting um, history of this about the houses of the people um, so there were, this, there were these material spaces that working class communities uh, built uh, quite literally uh, in Italian towns and, and communes in the late in the turn of the century the turn of the 19th century to the 20th century um, and these were these these contained uh, chambers of labor so they contained um, spaces for co-ops and mutual aid societies to have offices and kind of do, and actually on workshops they also contained theaters and they contained bars and pub, and sort of pubs and libraries and spaces for encounter and and, and, and seminar rooms and and, and and lecture theaters and so on and spaces effectively for collective joy and for public education and popular education which are these kind of really important spaces if you like the kind of material spaces that to generate the solidarities and the kind of excitement in the, and the mutual learning and the strategic kind of thinking that would require to actually build a movement collectively in a space. And I think that's what's lacking today, right? That's what's lacking in some of the stuff that we're thinking about in the UK. Uh, and I think to this, to the, the, like these, the, this series of, of seminars and this conference here at the State of Arts is, is trying to fill that gap. I think it does a really interesting job here of actually starting to, to talk about this in the kind of collective education project. I mentioned the Paris Commune earlier, and Christine Ross's book on the Paris, Paris Commune is, is, suggests that there was that education and these sort of spaces of, of participation and encounter and assembly were also really important. So in the years that ran, ran up to 1871, Paris was alive with this kind of revolutionary ferment in, in kind of clubs and salons and kind of um, these spaces of, um, of working class kind of encounter. They were often spaces of debauchery and kind of collective joy, but they were also spaces where people, you know, argued for these kind of communist futures against the French state and against the capitalist class at the time. So they, they, they were really the really important aspect, um, kind of cell structure of the, of the future. Um, and Red Bologna, which obviously, if, if you like, the, the period of the Bologna came under Communist Party rule in the 20th century from the 1950s to the 1970s, um, they were really big on education. So they put in place, uh, if you like, this was kind of the heir to the kind of those houses of the people in the kind of 19th century municipalist movements that I just talked about. Um, they put in place they put in place a really radical education program in the city uh, that was all about universal non-specialized education and so did the Paris Commune uh, so these are education is a big part of these movements which I think we we forget today and we need to really think we we think about how we how we start changing hearts and minds more broadly and um, in, you know across the public more, more broadly and not just within our, our own kind of activist spaces so with, with all that kind of background history and I'll try and sum up now because I know I'm getting close to, I've been banging on for far too long but here's a few examples of what's going on in 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 this sort of space of kind of um of encounter and assembly and cooperation in a kind of more traditional sort of municipalist mode rather than say community wealth building you've got the same collective solidarity against neoliberal extremism what a great name the same collective in Glasgow in Glasgow they're trying to start kind of conversations public conversations um leading to the idea of a people's plan. So they're going to try and create a people's plan, not, not driven by experts, but driven by people. You've got cooperation towns springing up across the country. And I think partly they were inspired by Carly Aquino's last visit to the UK, if I'm, if I'm wrong, um, in 2019. Um, people were inspired by Cooperation Jackson's set up their own cooperation towns here. There's a movement around the world, I guess, that sort of 
using this this kind of phraseology. And they're involved with with food, with mutual aid food um, co-ops trying to set up, trying to um, solve food poverty and create um, create basically forms of solidarity around food in, in in urban areas. You've got Beacon in Liverpool, which is a very recent non-party platform to this up. I mean, but I'm but I'm loosely involved with. We're sort of trying to write a manifesto at the moment. We're trying to think about how we can move past the kind of really quite toxic kind of party politics of, of the, that's, that's really um, setting into Liverpool at the moment, or has been has done in the last few years. And Middleton Cooperating, for instance, another is another interesting project uh, that I'm in, loosely involved in. Greater Manchester, in North Manchester, there's, there, there's a there's a small group of um, of co-ops and, and social enterprises and charities who are all trying to come together around this idea of Middleton Cooperating, which is a community benefit society that's trying to do community wealth building from the bottom up. So they have like five membership um, um, kind of um, groups, if you like. And some of those are anchor organizations like big universities and the big housing associations. Some of, some of, the, some of the groups you know, are, are represented by co-ops and some by local residents. But the idea rather than starting with the council and with the universities and the anchor institutions like you would say in Preston, they're starting from the grassroots and then inviting those into, into, into their kind of, into this catalyst with, of community welfare, which is, which is this organization. I guess we shouldn't we shouldn't forget the kind of top down stuff as well. I mean, it's in places where they, where it does exist, where there's devolution, there are levers to pull. It's the, it's really important to pull them. So you know, in Greater in Greater Manchester recently, there's been some really some interesting moves toward pushing um, lobbying uh, Andy Burnham for a land commission uh, along the lines of, of Liverpool Land Commission that might start to to think about the way that public land is is is, is divested, um, trying to democratise and socialise that land. And what does all this mean for Plymouth? So, I mean, I've done my best to try and think about how um, some of this stuff might work in terms of Plymouth. Um, and here you can see that I've sort of tried to, I've tried to, I've tried to sort of group some of Plymouth's assets and some of Plymouth's distinctive approaches along the lines of, um, of the kind of three-part typology I introduced earlier, so managed, um, managed autonomous and platform municipalism. And I guess if we're trying to think through this, because my research is about Plymouth to some extent, and I'm trying to think through what the Plymouth model is, if there is a, if there is a model or if it's some sort of pathway, then how does that relate to the Preston model, which is which, you know, which is celebrated in the press a, a lot? And I'd say it's quite distinctive. I mean, it, there's a sense in which Plymouth has a lot going for it. Right? So it has a cooperative council, or rather did have, up until recently, we particularly discussed that, assumes some really interesting public common partnerships with, the, with cooperatives, setting up things um, along the lines of Plymouth Energy Community, um, very interesting um, cooperative involved in, in, in generating a community land trust with solar energy. It's also linked into Cooperative Council Innovation Network nationally. And you have it, Plymouth, I think the, the, the biggest asset is this, this very long standing tradition, this very rich ecosystem of social and solidarity economy organising. And I think the thing that, I, that, that, that struck me is these community anchor organisations, like Real Ideas Organisation, like Nudge Community Builders, like, like Millfields, and so on. There's many across the city. It's quite similar to the way that Liverpool works as well, I think, in Glasgow, I guess, port cities, western, western, western edge port cities, working class cities, have these community anchor organisations in, in the neighbourhoods. And these, if you like, can, can act as a kind of conduit and as kind of hubs, as, as sort of, um, as the infrastructure that sort of, that fits the gap between citizens and people and, and the anchor institutions that are celebrated in Preston. And I think that's something the Preston model misses to its detriment. Um, and lastly, I guess, is this thing around is, is, is how do we build platforms? So if we're building dual power in a, in a, in a, in a, in a kind of a, in a balanced way, how do we think about electoral strategies in the context where, you know, as I say, the Cooperative Council's lost its, seems to have lost its mandate recently. So how do we build a, how do we build a platform beyond that? And I don't know much about what's going on in Plymouth around that. Maybe some of you guys can, can, can fill us in and, and talk about that. And lastly, um, I know I've been one over time, so I do apologise. Um, if we, we, we've got to look transnationally and, 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 and Carly started to, to articulate this uh, towards the end there didn't he that when we start talking about networks we need to think about how do we actually organize this transnationally translocally and that's the really important aspect of municipalism which we need to really hold dear I think so it's the thing that really allow, enables it to become this sort of radical alternative beyond the state so here I just sort of I've just I've just raised a few interesting what I think are interesting networks and organizations so some radical funders like transnational institute that really put a lot of money into this stuff quite independent independently minded some podcasts that sort of help with the education aspects of this is urban political it's quite academic but you know it's sort of it's along these lines you've got million that i'm involved with it's a network of, of, of municipal sort of global network of, of municipalist um activists and, and, and thinkers and trying trying to sort of um create a space for, for publishing stuff around this 
the symbiosis, which is a really interesting um, federation along the lines of this idea of Bookchin's confederation model in, in, in the US. So in the US, a lot of the, a lot, I think Corporation Jacks is a member of Symbiosis, but Carly could, could correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and Cities for Change, for instance. So there's some events that Cities for Change are organizing over the next few days. I think one tomorrow, so have a look. And this is coming out of Amsterdam. Amsterdam is a very interesting city alongside Barcelona that's pushing some of this stuff. So I'll leave it there for now. Maybe we can talk more in questions. Thanks very much. Thanks, Matt. That was great. Um, so I'm just thinking we should go to breakout rooms so that people can kind of um, take stock of everything that they've heard and that really good summary from you, Matt. I mean, what a great thing to be able to just study things and visit and talk to people about it and just kind of think about it. that's just yeah it must be quite a lovely thing to do um so if we're going to put people into breakout rooms for about 15 minutes um so that you can kind of mull over what you've heard kind of have a bit of a discussion and come back with some questions some key questions for our four speakers for the last kind of 15 minutes that we've got together um so i'll see you um on the other side of that